ZNS Total Sports. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Monday. It's all about the bull Reg Regarder, and our Amajal Knowles is in Exuma with the latest. Day two of the bull Reg Regatta in the books, and Sunday's race didn't see a change at the top, but some new names occupying the other top three spots. The bull Reg still out in front after two days of races. Rallying from fourth is a Golden Girl in second after day two, followed by Baikali, then Termite, as well as Keep Your Eyes on Him, Warrior, and then the Red Hawk Thunderbird. Golden Girl captain Tyrone McKenzie on how he managed to make the surge. Basically, we had an excellent start today, and uh, today we uh, we put on we changed we put on the biggest sale, and it worked well for us today. Now the race coordinator, Harcourt Hockey Brown, spoke to our news team about the first two days of sailing and how the committee seeks to address initial challenges. Well, the two races were going so far, uh, Mr. Nolan said it was a, was a good race, you know. Um, it was a little slow, starting out, but um, um, as we get things and, and all, all get things organized, um, you notice that everything just balanced right out and the, um, the boat them, all the boats them were sailed, you know, everybody had a good day. and, and the boat was supposed to come first, they come first, the boat comes back and they come back and you know. Now Sunday's race was named in honor of young sailor Cameron Williams who passed away tragically last year. The race chairman spoke on his legacy. It was a great thing for, for uh, uh, the honor Cameron, you know, because he, um, if he was here, I think he would have been one of the, I, I think he would have been one of the top sailors in this, in this regatta right now because he's a brilliant young guy and he was coming to be one of the best skipper in this little island of Exuma. And we'll continue to keep you updated here in Georgetown, Exuma for the Bull Rad Regatta. My government, Lyndon Smith. I'm Amajal Knowles, ZNS Total Sports. Thank you so much, Amajal. A couple of bowl games still to be played while others are in the history book. On the weekend, Bahamian David Swaby and the Oklahoma Sooners played Alabama Crimson Tide in the Orange Bowl and had an opportunity to play in the national championship game. After a brilliant first half and well-orchestrated 17-minute opener that resulted in a 28-0 lead, the Tide rolled on to a 45-34 victory. The Tides will now play Clemson Tigers on January 7th. Alex Smith knows a lot about bowl games. The former tight end with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is a graduate of Stanford University. He is also the son of the country's first NFL player, Ed Smith. Alex's ambition right now is to be a general manager in the National Football League. He's starting off, uh, this is his second year with the Buccaneers. He's a pro scout, which means he basically goes out and scouts the teams that the Buccaneers are getting ready to play at some time in the future. So he's, he's enjoying his job right now, and, uh, but the big picture for him is at some point to be a, a general manager. Their second meeting in less than four days with the Los Angeles Lakers didn't go the way Buddy Heald and the Sacramento Kings had hoped it would. Buddy Heald and crew led by four at halftime and was up 85-74 with 5 minutes 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter before the Lakers scored 12 straight points to take the lead. The Kings will regain the lead when Heald netted a three, but that still wasn't enough as they fell to the Lakers 121-114. Down, uh, basketball, man. Uh, we're glad to see you get some shots to come to the next game. Uh, we're more confident. You know, those shots that we always make, you know, uh, somebody with great looks, he'll make them. You know, uh, you know, we ride with him all the time. You know, uh, he's the guy that keeps our energy on the team. You know, he's a great looking man. Uh, we all have some great looks. He's a good player. Put him in the hole, man. Uh, he's a great player. It's tough to just, you know, you can't do that against a home crowd team. The crowd's a good game. And the uh, momentum is swinging that way. And, uh, after just missing out on a double-double on Friday night in a loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder, DeAndre Aiden with a career-high night on Saturday for the Phoenix Suns as they took on the Denver Nuggets. Aiden scored a season-high 33 points and added 14 rebounds, making 12 of 13 shots in the second quarter, which added up to 24 points. The highest scoring quarter by a Suns rookie and sixth highest by any Sun in franchise history. However, the Suns would still come out on the losing end in this one, falling 122 to 118. Started off the game kind of slow, 
uh, aggressive. Uh, Denver threw the first punch, and you know, I mean, we we played hard, but you know, it's kind of hard to like I always say, it's kind of hard to play behind, especially by 20 when you um you know when you're playing a good team like those guys, and you know, it kind of took us a while to really uh, you know lock in on the defensive end and really get it going on the offensive end as well. In the huddles, we try to. We try to like, you know, just talk to each other and, you know, always be in each other's air. At times we were quiet, you know, you felt, a, you know, there was a little time, there was a moment where they, Denver was on the run and we just were kind of quiet, but, you know, we kept the same energy, same positive energy. And, you know, we just f forgot about the scoreboard and just kept on going. One Bahamian cyclist getting a ride on the regional level. Here's Jonathan Benson with the report. 15-year-old 10th grade student of the C.L. Walker Senior High School, Felix Neely, will become the first Bahamian cyclist to train in South America. Neely will leave town on Thursday and spend the next three months with the Colombian Junior National Program. I mean, for me, I've gotten this opportunity is for me to become a better cyclist and for me to experience different culture of cycling. I am uh, expecting some great training and some hard work. The opportunity all coming about thanks to Cycles Unlimited and the Bahamas Cycling Federation. Partnership came about uh, from one of our club members, our past club members. He's actually gone back to Colombia now, but his um, nephew happened to be the coach for the uh, Colombian Junior National Team. I asked if he would consider asking the coach if we could send one of our cyclists to train with their with their team. and. He was right off the top, absolutely. Um, we know Felix as well, so we love Felix. He has heart. We really want to send him during our summer, but they're already in the cycling season there. So we got the okay from Felix's um, guardians, and um, we said with an opportunity like this, what we would do is we would send him, and with social media being what it is, we can make up school work. This opportunity, is, we believe, is a great one for Felix, um, which we believe it will take him certainly to different levels in the sport of cycling as we prepare to move forward um, in the Caribbean Championship and the different championships that comes later this year. Being somebody that I have had the opportunity of seeing grown, mentor, raised, trained, done many things with him uh, and to see him move into this particular high level of training. And, and taking this opportunity to go to Colombia where cycling is king. It's an excellent opportunity. He's going to be the trailblazers. We have other juniors coming up the ranks and I'm sure they definitely going to want to follow Felix's footstep. Felix is what we call one of our, uh, what we call him the Terminator. He never, never gives up no matter how difficult it is. And this is the type of energy that he brings to cycling. Neely returns home on March 24th. Jonathan Benson, ZNS Total Sports. Thanks so much, Jonathan. That's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson.